What would your catchphrase be if you were an answer? Fuck off. Few areas of entertainment are as successful as bringing in money as boxing is when the conditions are just right. One such condition is the inclusion of veteran voice artist and ring announcer Michael Buffer, a man who can command upwards of a million dollars for saying just five words. So Adam, you're a pretty big sports fan, so you already know what these words are, yes? Yeah, yeah. Would you like to tell the audience what they are? I'm not going to do it in his like, you know, enthusiastic voice, but it's let's get ready to rumble. Yeah, and here's a clip of Michael Buffer saying those iconic words. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! Yeah, just of course, of course it's let's get ready to rumble. Probably some people out there who didn't realise that it's one guy who does that. They probably just thought, oh, it's just a, a thing that's said before big boxing matches. And it is, but if you want it to be like, you know, as hype as possible, you're getting Michael Buffer in to do it. Yeah. And I fucking love the idea this dude, his entire job is. I just get paid to say, let's get ready to rumble. Because I went to a boxing fight about a year ago, mm -hmm. and literally there was like eight undercard fights, and they just had generics doing it. And then when it was the main event, they just brought Michael Buffer out, yeah. introduced it, and then that were it, we were off. And as someone who's heard those words, like, you know, said aloud, live, does it make a marked difference on the energy of the crowd? Yeah, basically everyone just starts going, Ray! just yeah. cheering. And that's kind of the point, cause back in the day before, like, you know, Michael Buffer arrived on the scene, ring announcers were those dudes you saw doing the undercard, just people from the local area and sometimes they were just like just random people who worked in the arena on the night because it wasn't seen as being that important a job and the story goes like michael buffer was at a boxing match with somebody and like the announcer was so pissed poor someone turned to michael and went why don't you go up there and do that and he went you know what i might try i might like speak to some people i know some people in the boxing world i might have a go at doing it and his first time was awful and went terribly because he was so nervous and the second time he got a bit better and then what he did is he thought, what, I need to think. I need to think of a way to hype up the crowd. And I think um, he was inspired by, like, you know, um, drag racing announcers of, gentlemen, start your engines. Yeah, yeah. That sort of thing. Like, well, that always gets the crowd excited. And boxing doesn't have an equivalent. And I'm presuming as I'm talking, there's a few, like, um, alternatives that Buffer thought of before, like, settling on, let's get ready to rumble. Which is just so good, and I love it that I love it so much. It's just part of boxing culture now, and you know that it is because it's in all the Rocky movies. <laughs> because Michael Buffer's in most of the Rocky movies, playing himself, which means he exists in the Rocky universe. Which means even in the fictionalized boxing world of Rocky, where like you know Soviet era Ubermenschers are like you know built in laboratories to punch Americans to death, <laughs> Michael Buffer's still getting work. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for these. And I bet he just turns up, here's a million dollars, says that, off it goes. Yeah, just like in boxing. Yeah, that's exactly it. And we can talk about, like, you know, how much money he earns from Let's Get It Run, because Mr. Buffer had the foresight to trademark those five particular words in regards to boxing. And you're probably thinking, why did he trademark five words, and also how did he do it? And apparently he had a very good lawyer. And I'm not sure about the exact specifics of how the trademark works, but... Uh, one conservative estimate says he's made about $400 million licensing it out. Jesus. And Michael Buffer being like, you know, kind of like, you know, down to earth dude, when he was asked about that, I went, sounds about right. <laughs> sounds about right, I've made nearly half a billion dollars from five words. And um, the best part about it is he says, like, someone asked him, why did you trademark it? Because that's like, you know, a really like novel thing to do. It wouldn't really be, like, you know, an idea to spring to a lot of people's minds. You know, well. It's because, like, you know, when I started to like, make a name for myself as a boxing announcer, I started to see Let's Get Ready to Rumble in newspaper articles and saw other ring announcers doing it and I went, oh, maybe I've got something here. Maybe I should see about trademarking this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now he's a multi, multi, multi-millionaire who gets paid a fucking fortune to roll out of bed and say that. I'm going to say something a little controversial now, though. Oh, we're at half a million subs now, so we can start doing that. Go. <laughs> I prefer Bruce Buffer. So he's the UFC guy, isn't he? Yeah. And... People in the audience are thinking, wait, Michael Buffer, Bruce Buffer, and they're both announcers? Are they related? And 99 times out of 100, the answer will be, no, it's just a coincidence. But it turns out they are related, yeah. and Michael Buffer didn't realise, because they're half-brothers. Yeah. And, said, and I think there's an interview with him where they ask him, oh, so you and Bruce Buffer, because, uh, you know, both announcers, how does that work out? And Michael Buffer said, well, I didn't even know I had a brother or half-brother until I was like 40-odd years old. I didn't even know about him. <laughs> 
And I've always think they've missed the trick not getting Bruce Buffer and Michael Buffer to like, you know, work together more <laughs> and getting to do an outside. So they do like pride fights. Yeah. And it's like, oh, we're going to get a boxer to fight like someone from the UFC. They should get them both in. Yeah. It's about to be the hype man in the corner. And while we've been talking, the cogs in my head have been turning. And I'd just like now for the edit of this one, can you just please put um, Agni and Rudra from Devil May Cry 3 behind us, please, and put Bruce and Michael Buffer on the heads of the swords. Because <laughs> have you played Devil May Cry 3 at all? No. So in that game, there are two enemies, Agni and Rudra, and you think it's like these two big statue dudes, and it's not. It turns out it's the swords, and the swords talk to you. Oh, God. So, and you, what happens is, when you defeat the statues, you get the swords, and the swords talk when you fight. So now I'm just imagining that Michael Buffer and Bruce Buffer on the end of the sword, just saying, let's get ready to rumble, as you start doing fucking just sick combos on people. So before Buffer, ring announcing weren't a, well, like, glamorous job, was it? Not particularly, no. And as I mentioned earlier, usually the ring announcer in a boxing match would just beat someone from the stadium, like someone from the local area who just applied and came in. But Buffer, like, you know, thanks to the fact that like, obviously he's got this, like, you know, invigorating mantra that people will pay extra just for him to say, like, you know, he's elevated the position somewhat and made it, like, you know, a classy gig. Yeah. And it's like, you know, that's helped somewhat by the fact he always wears, like, an immaculate tuxedo, yeah. sharp, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, Wolverine's beard line. And I just love the idea that before it was, like, oh, some guy off the street, and now it's, like, this huge celebrity, like you said, who, like, who comes in just for the main event and leaves. Yeah. It's like, like he's, like, a headliner at a gig or something like that, who just comes on stage for, like, one song and then fucks off, and everyone's like, that was amazing. It was worth the cost of entry to see that. But instead of like, any, like one song, it's like five fucking words. Did you know that Michael Buffer actually like did a song as well? Did he? Yeah. Of course he fucking did. Guess I love what that. it's called? Is it called Let's Get Ready to Rumble? <laughs> <Yeah>. <sighs> Do you know what that, like, that reminds me of like all those remixes people have done of like, you know, Buttery Biscuit Bass. Yeah. Right? And if no one knows what we're talking about, Nietzsche's already laughing in the corner. Um, for the show, is it Great British Bake Off? Yeah, I think so. I, I forget the name, is it Greg whatever? Nietzsche Corn, what's the guy's name? We don't know. Well, anyway, there's a, there's a guy on the show who describes someone thinks, oh, love that buttery biscuit bass. And someone's turned it into a dubstep song about the buttery biscuit bass. I like the bass, 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 bass. I like the buttery biscuit bass. I like the bass, bass, biscuit bass. I like the buttery biscuit bass. Oh, I love when people do that. But is it not that kind of, is it actually a song and not a remix? It's literally like, a, it's like a bit like, you know, a bit electronic and stuff like that. And then every so often it just cuts to Michael Buffer. Just doing his quotes. <laughs> oh, okay, fair enough. But like, it's in tune with the music. So I was thinking, is it just like one of those remixes, like Cassette Boy or something? Because that, if it is, that means we can talk about One Pound Fish. Oh, the One Pound Fish guy, <laughs> the legend. For people who don't know about One Pound Fish, would you like to tell people about One Pound Fish? So it's a video that went viral of this guy in a market in London. And he's selling fish for one pound. One pound fish. And so, do you know the little ditty that he did? Yeah, so it's just like, come on, ladies, come there on, ladies. One pound fish. It's so good. And it sounds annoying, and that's because it was, but it went super viral. And not a lot of people know the like you know, the addendum to this story because that guy, I forget his name, but um, he got a record deal out yeah. of it. <laughs> and it was like a one hit sink, like one hit wonder, who was just like called one pound fish. Come on, ladies, come on. Oh, that's what a nice thing. Like, you know, he's a market trader, and then he got like a single, and he got a bit of money out of it. The pe thing people don't know is that, oh yeah, um, he got deported after that. But then there's another twist to the story, because it turns out his song was a massive hit back in Pakistan. <laughs> so now he's a celebrity over there. So they deported him to a place. He's now a celebrity and a millionaire. So he's made a lot of money off the back of this, just like licensing yeah. media events, things like that. Buffett is a multi-millionaire and um, like, in addition to licensing the phrase and like, you know, doing like boxing matches, he's also like, made film appearances. I think he's in Dumbo. <laughs> and that's one of his few actual character roles instead of just playing himself. And then in addition to that, he just does live appearances every now and again. And like some of them are really weird. Like he said, oh, once some really rich dude paid me to announce a wrestling match for his 11-year-old birthday. And he actually got in proper like wrestling the WWE and paid him, he was like, oh, fine. Buffer said, like, you can book me for any event you want. I'll turn up as long as, like, you know, you've, the deal, like, the terms are fair and you go through, like, the correct channels. But if you wanted to say those five magic words, you better be willing to shell out a bit extra because yeah. obviously he knows that's what people are after. 
Because he's made his money, do like people actually just ask him, can you do it just for free for charity or anything like that? Yeah, and that's the thing with Buffer. He says like, um, obviously if it's for commercial purposes, I will charge money, but like, there's a lot of times where I have just done it for free for charity and something you know, like, quite close to his heart is like any military um, events or like, you know, military causes because like he served like in Vietnam and he said like, not a lot of people know that about me because obviously it was many years ago, but any time I get a call from anything like that, I will do it for free if my schedule allows it. And I've even like moved around my schedule to go do events for the troops because it's just something I feel very strongly about. But if you've got money and you want to just turn to your kid's birthday party, you better fucking pay. <laughs> Michael Buffer wants his cut. So Michael Buffer is the dude you get in if there is like, you know, just a massive like square off between two titans. So in that vein, let's now talk about other events that Michael Buffer should have commentated from, <laughs> from fictional history. So I'm going to start with the Tournament of Power. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so Michael Buffer should have been there. He should have been the guy fucking like, who was it, Zeno, who just yeah. calls in. It's like, oh God, Tournament of Power to do. Let's get, let's get Michael Buffer in. Get him his cup, get him his cup. Just in the middle of the battleground, just before they start, got 100 fighters around him. Yeah. Just like, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> let's get ready to rumble. As he just like, you know, just instant transmissions back to his like big sex mansion. <laughs> Guy loves it. Like, what other events do you think he should have commentated? Or like, that need a commentator? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I'm thinking like, you know, King Kong versus Godzilla comes out this year. I'm reckoning they could do that Monster Island. Monster Island can get in a commentator. We need that shit. King Kong. Can you imagine him announcing King Kong? It's like, here he is, weighing in at 95 tonnes and like 300 foot fucking tall, squaring off against the, the, the big G, Godzilla himself, rocking up the atomic lizard. I'm just, I'm just now really giggling at the idea of just like Godzilla and King Kong at the weigh-in. And you're like, King Kong just like fucking this. And then Godzilla just rocks up with his little dad gut and his big like tail fins. Just going, yeah, whatever. I, I fire lasers out of my mouth. I've got this. God, Godzilla's there for a payday, isn't he? He is, yeah. He's up. He knows he's going to win. The one thing that I want uh, Michael Buffer to announce is Brexit Day. Let's get ready to leave. Oh, man. Well, they're not, they're not getting Michael Buffett. They're getting Big Ben. Do you hear about <laughs> yeah, that? Yeah. We're going to spend half a billion to repair Big Ben to bong on Brexit. I don't think anything sums up that entire thing more than we're going to spend more money than we need to getting something that doesn't work yeah. to work for one day and then immediately like put it under like eight months of repairs. Oh, like, the thing is, though, we already tried to have someone announce Brexit and it went wrong. We had Paul Chuckle do it. Oh. It's, Paul Chuckle announcing Brexit, man. What a great symbol for that like day. One half of a famous comedy duo try to carry on as if nothing's gone wrong. I just like love the idea of one day announcing Brexit and the next day DJing at Beer Keller. Oh god, what a legend. <laughs> Fucking hit. Oh, Michael Buffer DJing. Michael Buffer DJing, yeah. Oh, but he's got a DJ at, like a really shit freshers night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because like cool. do you remember like those freshers nights you'd have and they just get celebrities? They get celebrities. Yeah. And what was the worst one that you met? Or like that turned up? Uh, I didn't go to uni, but I know that Dick and Dom did one recently. Uh, I think the one I did is Bodger and Badger. Oh, no. But like, which one was Bodger and which one was Badger? Like, does anyone remember? Or whatever it was, like the guy who played... Or what, I, think I, I actually know Bodger was like the guy and then Badger was yeah. the little Badger. And the guy left Badger in his hotel. So he left like the little puppet in his hotel and then came to the meeting, but it's like he's just a dude. And people go in like, oh, it's, I think, like, imagine like Sutty and Sweet turned up. Well, like, oh, I left the puppets back at the house. It's just the guy who does the puppetry for Sutty. He's like, no, we want to meet the badger. And apparently the guy got so mad he left because he was so pissed that people wanted to meet this fucking puppet more than him. It's like, oh, so can you imagine that's what your life becomes? Just, fucking, that's dire. Fucking... Badger, who loves like instant mash, is more popular than you.